Hello YouTubers, this is Triple Seven Die Hard Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model as I continue to play catch up. Today I'll be doing a review on a Gemini Jets Vintage British Airways Boeing 747-400 in their Union Jack livery scheme in the flaps down version in a 1-200 scale model. I purchased this model from Poppy's Treasures, which is a store that's located uh, about 10 minutes north of Kansas City International Airport in Platte City, which is the Kansas City suburb in Platte City, Missouri. And their website address is www.poppystreasures.com. But first, before I go into details about this particular aircraft model, please allow me to share some information about the history of British Airways and how they actually came about. British Airways is a British-based airline carrier whose actual history beginnings can actually be traced back to August 25, 1919 when it was formed as well as originated from a small airline company called Aircraft Transport and Travel Limited. And after a series of mergers with different as well as various airline carriers, it was formed under the name of Imperial Airways on March 31, 1924 then merged with another British-based airline carrier that ended up forming under the name of BOAC, British Overseas Airways Corporation, on November 24, 1939, then merged with another airline called BEA, British European Airways, on January 1, 1946, and operated under the BOAC, the British Overseas Airways Corporation umbrella, until September 1, 1972, and that's when the British Airways Group was eventually established after the passage of the Civil Aviation Act of 1971 was passed, which also formed the British Airways Board, which resulted in the merger of the BOAC, the British Overseas Airways Corporation, and BEA, British European Airways, consolidating into one big airline carrier as the consolidated airline was officially established on March 31, 1974, and officially commenced operation by the dissolution of BOAC, British Overseas Airways Corporation, and BEA, British European Airways, to become the airline which is known to the world today as British Airways, as the British based carriers celebrated their centennial anniversary on August 25, 2019. Whereas, the headquarters of British Airways is located in the Waterside Building, which is located in the Harmonsworth section of London, England, which is a village located in the borough of Hillendon that's located northwest of Heathrow Airport, while the airline's main base of operations is located on the grounds of London Heathrow Airport, which is located approximately 14 miles west of the central district section of London, England, and also has a major presence at Gatwick Airport, which is located approximately 30 miles south of the Central District section of London, England. British Airways is the national flag carrier airline of the United Kingdom, as well as the largest operating airline in the United Kingdom in terms of international flights, as well as international destinations served. However, based on fleet size and based on the number of passengers carried, it is the second largest carrier in the United Kingdom after EasyJet. As of May 2022, or at the time of this video review posting, British Airways currently flies to 183 destinations worldwide across six inhabited continents, as British Airways is currently one of 10 airlines to own this actual distinction of permanently flying to all six inhabited continents, along with Air Canada, Air China, Delta Airlines, Emirates, Korean Air, Qantas, Qatar Airways, South African Airways, and United Airlines respectively, with an operating fleet of 257 aircraft. But unfortunately, British Airways announced on July 16, 2020, that due to the coronavirus pandemic that has affected the global airline industry as a collective, the British-based airline decided to retire their entire fleet of Boeing 747-400s from its operations with immediate effect as this aircraft is no longer operating in the British Airways fleet. Also, as of May 2022, or at the time of this video review posting, British Airways is one of 59 airlines in the world of aviation that currently operates as a certified four-star airline carrier, according to the international airline review firm Skytrax Magazine, and the Boeing customer code for British Airways for this particular aircraft was 36. All right, everyone. Let's take a look at the front of the box, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal. You see the flaps down decal. That's the flaps down version. The British Airways title the British Airways ribbon logo, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, the aircraft type, the 1200 scale diecast model aircraft, as well as the item number information you see at the front of the box. 
All right, now looking at the back of the box, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, some more information there, the Boeing official license product decal, as well as the social media pages of Gemini Jets. You can pause and read that information if you like, but in the meantime, I'm going to keep this moving. All right. All right, now looking at the top of the box, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the adult collectible model and warning information, as well as the item number information you see at the top of the box. Now looking at the bottom of the box, and all you see there pretty much is the Gemini 200 gold decal you see displayed at the bottom of the box. All right, now you're looking at the left side of the box, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal. The 1200 scale diecast model and item information, the flap down information, which is a flap down version, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, as well as the aircraft type you see on the left side of the box. All right, now you're looking at the right side of the box. It's pretty much the same information on the left side of the box I just showed you earlier on. All right. All right, now you're looking at the actual model stand that came with the model. It's kind of mellow there. And then right above here, you see this black pad right here, folks. The sole purpose of that black pad in everyone is not only that pad protects your mount, it also prevents from being damaged or scratched when you decide to put your uh, aircraft mount on this particular model stand. All right, now you're looking at this plastic bag here. And what's inside this plastic bag are the actual gear replacement doors featuring the two little toothpicks that's for these, the substitute for these gear replacement doors. Please stay tuned as I go into detail for the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors for this particular aircraft model, all right? All right, with all that information out of the way about the history of British Airways and how they actually came about, with all the details here at the front of the box, as well as the information at the back of the box, the actual model stand that came with the model, as well as the gear replacement doors and the two little toothpicks inside that plastic bag. With no further ado, here is the actual model out of the packaging box. Let's check it out. There it is, everyone. The Gemini Jets Vintage British Airways Boeing 747-400 in the Union Jack livery scheme in the flaps down version in a 1-200 scale model. All right. Allow me to go into some details about this particular livery scheme you see on this aircraft. This is the current livery scheme of British Airways, which was unveiled along with its brand new corporate identity back on June 10, 1997, which has become known as the Chatham Dockyard slash Union Jack livery scheme, as the name of the livery scheme actually takes its name from the historic dockyard Chatham Kent, as the tail fin on the aircraft actually bears a red, white, and blue interpretation of the Union Jack flag which is actually the official name of the national flag for the United Kingdom that was used by the late English Naval Commander, Lord Nelson. And the first aircraft that actually begun sporting this livery scheme was a British Airways Concorde supersonic transport, which bared the registration ship number G-BOAB, as this iconic livery scheme was developed and created by the British design consultancy agency firm of Newell and Sorrell. So, with all that information out of the way about this iconic livery scheme, with no further ado, everyone, let us get down to the business and allow me to show you all the details on this aircraft model, shall we? Let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the port slash left side is where we're going to begin. We're going to start at the front nose landing gears right here, the landing gear struts, the landing gear lights inside there. I'll give you a better visual view of that detail later on. Then there's the uh, landing gear door with the partial registration ship number, Victor November. See the Peter tubes and the static ports, the radon nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows. I'm going to give you a better visual view of those details later on in the review as well. But right above the windows right there, about next to the British Airways title, is the uh, British Airways ribbon logo, which is this logo right here. And the British Airways ribbon logo was actually designed by Noel and Sorrell in 1997, which actually symbolizes a distant echo of the Speedbird symbol that was first used by Imperial Airways in 1932 and then by the BOAC, the British Overseas Airways Corporation. And now I'm looking at the One World logo displayed by the L1 and L2 entrance doors, which is this logo right here, as well as right there. 
And British Airways actually joined the One World Alliance along with American Airlines, Cathay Pacific, and Qantas as one of the four founding members on February 1st, 1999, which consists of 14 airline members from six inhabited continents. All right. All right, now you're looking at the center of the aircraft and underneath the wings are these big massive engines. And these are the Rolls-Royce RB211-524G turbofan type engines that was used on this particular British Airways Boeing 747-400 jumbo jetliner aircraft. You also see the Rolls-Royce logo on the engine column there and there as well. Now we're going to turn this aircraft mile around. We're going to actually find out if the turbofan blades do spin. Let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the port side of both engines. We're going to start the outer engine here first. Do it spin? Yes. Do the inner engine spin? Yes, that spins as well. Then there's the inboard landing light, as well as the front, uh, as well as the front visual view of the landing bogey gears you see there, which includes the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors right there. And then you're looking at the uh, wing slanted down in the flaps down, slanted down angle. You see that right there. Okay, I'm gonna show you an area bird's eye view, a little better visual view there later on. Okay, hold on to that part. All right, now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the starboard side, right side of the aircraft. Let's see the fan blade spin over here as well. Yes. The inner engines, perfect, awesome. And then there's the inboard landing light. And then you see the uh, the flaps and slanting in the downward angle here as well. There as well. Including the... Uh, Front visual view of the landing bogey gears include the landing gear struts as well as the actual landing gear doors. All right, now you look at the front of the aircraft where right above the cockpit windows is the partial registration ship number IVN. Yeah, IVN. You got a better visual view of the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the radar nose cone, the nose gear doors. The landing gear lights inside of the nose gear doors, the landing gear struts, as well as the front visual view of the front nose landing gears. All right, now you look at the aerial bird's eye view of these uh, wings here on the port side. You see how the flaps and the slats are slanted down in a flaps down angle as, as well, which I find impressive. All right, now looking at the winglet wingtip device on the port side of the aircraft, it features the red navigation light that sits on the edge of the wing right next to this wingtip device. All right, we still have the center of the aircraft, but you got a, 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 a visual view, a back visual view of the, uh, the wings here, how they slant the slats, how they slant it down in a flaps down angle. And you see the center bogey gears here on this side of the aircraft, which includes the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. All right, we're at the back of the aircraft here, and right next to the registration ship number is the Royal Mail logo, which is this little little red logo you see displayed there. And Royal Mail is the primary postal service company in the United Kingdom that's been in business since 1516, as British Airways actually uses this service to transfer their mail and parcel from around the world. And right next to the Royal Mail uh, logo is the actual registration ship number, Gulf Dash Charlie India Victor November. Registration ship number Golf Dash Charlie India Victor November. This was British Airways 39th Boeing 747 400 jumbo jetliner aircraft that entered the carrier's fleet. And the first test flight on this aircraft took place on September 18, 1997, and was delivered to British Airways on September 29, 1997, and operated in the British Airways fleet until it was eventually withdrawn from service on March 26, 2020. Then was flown to an aircraft storage facility that's located on the grounds of Cotswold Airport, which is located in Gloucestershire, England, on April 16, 2020, where this aircraft is currently stored up at as of May 2022 or at the time of this video review posting. And from the time that British Airways took delivery of their very first Boeing 747-400 jumbo jetliner aircraft, which bared the registration ship number, G dash B N L A on June 30th, 1989, until they took delivery of their very last Boeing 747 jumbo jetliner aircraft, which bared the registration ship number G dash B Y G G on April 29th, 1999. 
British Airways previously registered and operated as many as 58 of these iconic jetliners in their fleet, as British Airways was previously the largest operator of a Boeing 747-400 variant until July 16, 2020, when British Airways officially decided to retire their entire fleet of Boeing 747-400s from its operations with immediate effect due to the COVID-19 pandemic, as this aircraft has since been replaced with their more fuel efficient Airbus A350-1000XWBs, their Boeing 787-9s and 10s, their Boeing 777-300ERs, as well as their forthcoming next-generation Boeing 777-9Xs, which are scheduled to enter the British Airways fleet sometime in 2024. All right, now you're looking at the tail fin of the aircraft, and right above the, the top of the tail fin is the partial registration ship number, India Victor November. But more importantly, uh, the airline, the Chatham Dockyard slash Union Jack livery scheme, which is displayed on the tail fin of the aircraft, which is this logo right here. The livery scheme, sorry about that. And since the airline's formation in 1974, British Airways sported a Union Jack livery scheme painted on their tail fin up until 1984, when it was changed to the Landor livery scheme and was changed back to the Union Jack livery scheme in 1999 as delivery on the tail fin of the aircraft resembles a section of the British Union flag. Now you're looking at the back of the aircraft, what you see is the APU, auxiliary power unit exhaust hole, and there is an actual hole there, check that out, see? And underneath the APU is also is the actual strobe light, as well as the entire aircraft from the rear view angle. Let's check it out. There it is, the Gemini Jets Vintage British Airways Boeing 747-400 in their Union Jack livery scheme in the flaps down version in a one twin scale from the rear view angle. All right, now you're looking at the uh, front of the aircraft here on the starboard slash right side where you see the front nose landing gears, the landing gear struts, the landing gear lights, the landing gear door featuring uh, the partial registration ship number on that nose gear door, Victor November, you see the Peter tubes and the static ports, the radon nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit window, the British Airways ribbon logo, the British Airways billboard title, the front cargo container loading door, the inboard landing lights, as well as the Rolls Royce uh, RB211 engines you see here featuring the uh, Rolls Royce logo on the engine column there and there as well. All right, now you're looking at the aerial bird's eye view of the wings on the starboard side of this aircraft, how the flaps and the slaps right here, the flaps and the slaps are slanted down in a flaps down angle. All right, now you're looking at the wingtip device on this side of the aircraft featuring the green navigation light you see displayed there as well. All right, now you're looking at the back of the wings here. Uh, the slats, you know, slanted down in a uh, flaps down, slanted down angle you see there, as well as the, uh, the outer bogey gears here on this side, the aircraft, the center bogey gear, and the outer bogey gear, including the landing gear struts, as well as the actual landing gear doors. All right, now you're looking at the back of the aircraft here on the starboard side, where you see the rear cargo container loading door, the AFT bolt bin door, the registration ship number, as well as the airline's livery scheme on here, the Chatham Dockyard slash Union Jack livery scheme, you see displayed on the tail fin of the aircraft, as well as the partial registration ship number you see above the, uh, the Union Jack livery scheme, India, Victor, November. All right. All right, before I show you the aerial bird's eye view, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model in full detail, please allow me to let you check out one feature, which is the actual rolling gears. Let's check it out. It rolls somewhat, a little squeaky there, but it rolls. So far, so good. Uh, the aircraft mount tilts. The front nose gear, it swivels. Perfect there and there as well. So with that said, let's check out the aircraft from the aerial bird's eye view. Let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at this aircraft mount from the aerial bird's eye view. We're going to start at the front of the aircraft where you see the radon nose cone. The windshield wipers, the cockpit windows, the partial registration ship number above the cockpit windows, India Victor November, the pilot's cape hatch door, the uh, anti-collision beacon right, right there, the high frequency antenna, the ADF antennas, 
another high frequency antenna, and then there's the vertical stabilizer as well as the horizontal stabilizer. You see the two little dots right there on the edge of the horizontal stabilizer as well as the dots over on this side of here as well. Those two little dots, everyone, are actually called illuminator lights. And the sole purpose of those illuminator lights that it actually light up this tail fin here when it used to fly during nighttime, okay? Now, let's check out the wing, the engines and the wings. Now, you see the engines there, there, as well as the um, wings in the flaps down, slanted, angle, the flaps and the slaps. You see there, flaps, slats, they both in the downward angle. Fuel dumb valve as well as the winglet wingtip device. Let's check out over here. The engine's there, there, as well as the wings. No wing walkway, but you got the flaps, slats, ailerons, and the flaps down, slanted down angle. Fuel dumb valve as well as the blended winglet wingtip device on this side of the aircraft as well. All right, now you're looking at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft was partially uh, white where the radar nose cone is, and everything else is blue from this point on. Then you see the crew escape hatch door, the nose gear door, the front nose landing gear. You can see a high frequency antenna there, the anti collision beacon light, the model hole where the model stand goes in at, the, uh, the center and landing bogey gear is here. They tilt perfect. And then you see the Gemini Jets logo, a couple more high frequency antennas, the pressure relief valve, the APU housing door, as well as the horizontal stabilizers underneath. Now let's check out the outer gears here. A little challenge tilting there, but it's all good. You see the engines there, there as well, as well as the wings underneath include the flat slats in a uh, flaps down slanted down angle the registration ship number, the fuel dumb valve, as well as the winglet wingtip device. Now let's check out over here. Outer bogey gear here. A little challenge there, but it's okay. The engine's there, there as well, as well as the flaps, slats, ailerons in a flaps down, slanted down angle. The fuel dump valve, as well as the winglet wingtip device on this side of the aircraft as well. All right, since I show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft mount, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft mount in full detail, now I'm going to put it on that nice little metal model stand that I showed you earlier that came with the model. So with no further ado, everyone, here is the model on the stand. Let's check it out. Okay. If I ain't got this model on stand, no problem, no hesitation. As you see it in the takeoff landing position with the model on stand. Now I'm going to have to let this model rotate in all directions in a clockwise rotation, starting with the port side. Check it out. Now you're viewing from the tail cam angle. Now you're viewing from the starboard side. Now the front view angle, as well as back to the port side of the aircraft. Okay, before I take this model stand, I got it at this angle for a reason, and the reason is, is the actual magnetic gears that actually came with this model. So I'm going to go ahead and take them and let you see what I'm talking about. We're going to start at the front nose landing gear. That's magnetic. The outer bogey gears here on this side, the aircraft, the port side, that's magnetic. The center bogey gear here, that's magnetic. The outer bogey gear on the starboard, that's magnetic. And the center bogey gear right. I can get it out. There you go. Right there. Okay. Now, since I got all the gears off this model, let you see this model at a different angle in flight mode slash gears up position without the gears. Let's check it out. 
Okay, now you see the model being displayed without the gears in flight mode slash gears up position without the gears. Now you got one or two options how you want to continue to play your model. If you want to continue to play it like this, that's fine. Now you know these gear replacement doors I showed you earlier. That's the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors. So you can substitute your gears while you play your model like this in flight mode position. Or you can do like I do, just keep them in the gear down position. Gears up, gear down, your choice. I choose to keep mine on there because that's more value to the model. But with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put these gears back on this model, take this model off the stand, and wrap up this model review. All right. All right, the seating configuration. Prior to July 16, 2020, British Airways had three seat and configurated cabin layout versions that they previously used on their Boeing 747-400 jumbo jetliner aircraft. However, on this particular British Airways Boeing 747-400 jumbo jetliner aircraft, it seated 345 passengers in a four-class configurated cabin layout. All right, everyone, here is the breakdown from rows one to five, which is the main deck, which will be about from here to about right here. You have 14 first class open suites, rows 11 to 16, which is also the main deck, which will be from here to here. You have 36 world traveler plus class seats, row 17 to 20, which is the main deck, which will be from here to right here. You have 32 club world flatbed seats, and then row 60 to 64, which is the upper deck, which will be from here or right back there. You had additional 20 club world flatbed seats which brought the total to 52 club world flatbed seats and rows 28 to 55 which will be from here all the way back to the rear of the aircraft you had additional 243 world travel class seats which brought the total 345 seats and finally british airways previously utilized their entire fleet of Boeing 747s that 400s from 1989 to 2020 on routes from london heathrow to abuja Accra, Ghana, Austin, Texas, Bahrain, Beijing Capital, Boston, Logan, Massachusetts, Bournemouth, Cape Town, South Africa, Cardiff, Wales, Chicago, O'Hare, Dallas, Fort Worth, Denver, Colorado, Dubai, United Arab Emirates, Houston, Bush, Intercontinental, Johannesburg, South Africa, Kenbo, Kuwait City, Kuwait, Lagos, Nigeria, Larnaca, Las Vegas, Nevada, Los Angeles, California, Mexico City, Mexico, Miami, Florida, Nairobi, Kenya, New York, JFK, Paris, Charles de Gaulle, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Phoenix, Arizona, Moscow, Dumas, de Devaux, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, San Diego, California, San Francisco, California, Seattle, Washington, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Vancouver, British Columbia, Washington, Dulles, and from London, Gatwick, to Atlanta, Georgia, and Krakow. Those were the routes. Well, everyone, this will conclude this model review. I'd like to know if you got this model or you plan on getting it, if you can find it. This model, is, I know for a fact, is coming very hard to find as we speak. So with that said, if you can snatch it up, I highly recommend it. So, that being said, please take care. God bless. Stay tuned. There's more model content coming. And above all, please stay safe out here. Peace.